Good afternoon, everybody. I think uh, we can start until uh, he's come back. And uh, this is going to be the fifth uh, seminar that we have uh, from this research seminar on information systems. And uh, Hayes is going to be the speaker. She's going to talk about the general vision of a human uh, computer interaction. And and uh, I just want to, uh, yeah, so as we used to do in every seminar, we, we have some, uh, some initial thoughts, but we changed it. It's, Slightly, uh, we changed it a little bit uh, the, the approach, and uh, I want the, fin the first part is going to be more about the interaction. So what we want to do is that uh, we're going to include the new interaction format. So we have been using chats on Google Meet for for you to post your question for interaction, engaging with the other participants. Uh, but if, but we think that uh, some of the questions were like missed from the timeline, and uh, we want to have this. Uh, we want to give the opportunity for everybody to make direct questions to the speaker, okay? So we're going to use uh, Mentimeter for that. I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, Alexandre already used it uh, on the second seminar. And I think it worked fine, right? Uh, so th this is why we want to try it again. Uh, it seems that it helped us organize questions even during the, the, the talk. If you already have a question, you place there at Mentimeter, uh, and then uh, later, uh, the speaker can take your question, and as soon as uh, it's already solved or answered, uh, the questions may be dismissed. It gives an idea uh, to the speaker as well of how many questions there are uh, there to be uh, answered uh, so that uh, he or she, in this case, uh, can uh, better plan um, the timing and everything. But let's try it. This is, this is what uh, Flavio and I were, were thinking. We, we, we try it. We, we think it's better. We keep it. Otherwise, we, come, we go back to the chat. Exactly. So, uh, just to add, but uh, on what Alexandre just said, I think that we can think that the chat can be still used. So you can still make your comments on chat, but but the questions itself for the speaker should be put on the should be posted on Mentimeter. So we can, as as he said, we can organize the time, and then we can organize what question has been answered and and so forth. Okay. Uh, so for everybody that has already used, this is the link. I I, I invite all of you to get into the site and use the code for that. I think. Uh, I can do it afterwards as well. I can put it on the chat while while uh, Heise is starting uh, starting his uh, her presentation, and so yeah, I think it's easier. So uh, I can post it afterwards, and then you can post your question directly to the speaker. Okay, uh, yeah. So I think without further ado, we can just go to Heise's presentation, and yeah. So the floor is yours. Uh, you can start sharing your screen, whatever you want. Okay, so. Uh, I'll talk about the general vision of human-computer interaction, but I will give a focus on what I've been working and the places, the laboratories that I've been working on. And um, I hope that at the end of the, conf the, the end of the presentation, I can talk a little bit about the main conference that is Sky that I went last year, and talk a little bit about the main conference and main journal that you can find other publications. Um, so, um, first of all, um, you need to know what is a human-computer interaction. Basically, a human-computer interaction is a study of how people interact with machines. And when you talk about that, we talk about uh, um, also about how people interact with different hardware. So every time that a hardware is created, people had to think about people are going to interact with that. So when the keyboard was created a long time ago, people thought about um, how the letter should be displayed, and as you should know, um, there are different keyboards according the language that the person is going to use. So it also happened with the mouse that has to be worried. One of the things that that work with mouse should be worried is about ergonomics. It also happens with the pencil that people used to use for drawing. Uh, more recently, people have used a lot of touch-based devices. So this is also uh, related to my community interaction and um, cameras, microphones, how people use it. It should be transparent to the user. Uh, also, gesture based is something that it can be comprised in how people interact. And um, also, there is another kind that is the gaze interaction. That's the one that I've been working more during my life. And um, this is just some example of um, how people can interact with the machine. Um, when I start to work with a um, computer, there was this, uh, this concept that people that there are like 
some users that could not use the machine because they were like dumb users. And now we don't think like this anymore. Now, if a user doesn't know how to use the machine, the problem is not the user, but the problem is the interface. The problem is that we didn't find a right engineer that made a really good design for the user. So now people are more concerned about how to display the information and uh, um, people are more concerned about the challenges of doing a right design. So now people think that the design should be transparent. It means that the user have to use the design or they have to use the tool or the software um, as it was something normal to him. It has to be something easy for him. The first time that he gets the tool or the software, it should be something that he can already um, use without uh, have to learn too much to use that. It should be intuitive. And not just that, because when you talk about that, we're talking about usability, but we are also thinking about the value that experience is going to aggregate to the user. So nowadays we hear a lot of enterprises worried about user experience, uh, what is something really good. And when you talk about human computer interaction, we also are talking about accessibility. So there is a lot of people that are working for making softwares and um, tools and anything else that is related to computer science more accessible for um, um, people with motor impairments, um, for, for elderly people, for instance. There is a lot of, uh, for instance, there is a lot of applications for smartphones that people are concerned about the size of the um, the size of the letters because cannot be very small. Otherwise, people that uh, elderly people cannot uh, lose very well. Um, the people are also thinking about how to do good design for kids. And uh, recently, I also found um, a website that they were doing. Um, it was very interesting. They were doing a uh, website interaction for pets. So the dog or the cat could choose which toy they could uh, they could um, like more. So, so all of that is related to all people, uh, interactive machines. And um, this is just some examples about what are what you have to think when you think about human computer interaction. And um, just for mm, just for open up parentheses, um, most of the things started um, when you think about usability, it's very common that people who start to think like Apple and Steve Jobs and um, all of that because uh, it was really an enterprise that was revolutionary in this um, in this thought about one more about the user experience and um, how the user is going to use their machines. So, oops, thank you. so human computer interaction is a really multidisciplinary field so we not use just computer science knowledge but we also use uh, human factors knowledge so and that uh, are uh, characteristics for humans so we can talk about ergonomics we are talking about psychological uh, aspects of human nature we are talking about physiological aspects of human nature and we are also talking about uh, cognitive science. It means that we are talking about uh, how the person is going to learn uh, to use the, the tool. And um, if the person has to uh, do a really effort to memorize how to use uh, the interface and everything related to the cognitive uh, aspects of the human being. So I'll talk a little about my research trajectory. So um, I'm born in Manaus. So I made my bachelor in Ufa. So here is a little bit about my city. And uh, when I was in Ufa, um, I used to do part of the Petty Computer Science. That is uh, a group that there is in a lot of universities in Brazil. And we used to do 
things with the extension and research and teaching. So during my bachelor, um, I participate also for of the computer challenges. So this is my team. We went two times to the national challenge. So it was really cool. I was very uh, engaged to the computer, all the everything that was related to the university. So, but um, my first contact with researching was to work with recommender systems. Uh, so it was not for working with uh, human computer interaction. Uh, I used to work with um, recommendation of advertisement for digital TV. And then I finished that and I started, I made my master and my PhD in the SMC in USP. So this is my research group. Um, that is my advisor. And um, in this, that was my first contact with human computer interaction. Uh, in this group, we, my colleagues used to do a lot of works with, uh, related to human computer interaction. Um, but my master it was not yet in human computer interaction. I was still in the field of uh, recommender system, so I was working with the leaking analysis and Wikipedia. I just started to work with human computer interaction during my PhD. That way, and I started to get, work with gaze interaction, and um, it was like a transition. And it was a, a very good transition because um, I really love the field that I work. Um, so after that, I made a postdoc in USP. In this, in this moment, it was in the IMI. I stayed there for six months working on a research project. It's still working with gaze interaction. And then I went, I came here to France. I started working in India, where I worked with the mouse. Uh, mouse interaction. And I will talk about all this to you now. Um, so I think you remember that some years ago during the Buddha challenge, challenge, that it was a challenge that a lot of um, famous people threw a book of ice on their heads. That was for um, enhance some money to people that had some water impairment, especially to us for people with ALS. Um, I don't know if you know this disease, but the person, most famous person that has this disease is Stephen Hawkins. So, but basically it's, it's a disease that a person cannot uh, use no muscles be, um, below their necks. So they cannot use their hands for typing, they cannot even talk, depends on the degree of the disease. So as a person cannot, uh, the only thing that a person can do is use their eyes or doing some interaction. So thinking about that, we start to work with this scenario. So in this case, we were working with human computer interaction, but more to the accessibility side. And um, so that's it. So um, there is a lot of applications for gay interaction. Um, what we decided to work was specifically for keyboards, like considering that you have a virtual keyboard, was specifically for typing. So one of the first uh, ideas that people created in academia for working with uh, typing was um, we're working with uh, gaze-based, uh, gaze, I'm sorry, gesture-based uh, gaze typing. So, for doing that, we have to consider that we have a screen, and usually there is an eye tracker that is tracking to where people is looking at. So the, the gesture based was considered that uh, the person needs to do some gesture to type a letter. So here I put a very simple example of a gesture based. Let's imagine that a person wants you to type a, a letter. Uh, let's imagine that the dot can be when the person look to the left and the slash is when the person look to the right. So uh, uh, then the person has to do a lot of gestures. So I'll give you a time just for doing uh, small exercises. So consider that dot is, um, is a movement to the left and is a, not a head movement, it's just a gaze movement with your eyes. So, a dot is a movement to the left and a lash is a movement to the right. So I will give you some seconds for you try to type your name. Just for you have an idea 
how tired this can be, and just you have the feeling of the problem with this technique. So, um, if you need exercise, as you can see, one of the biggest problems is that the person has to memorize which are the gesture that the person has to do if the person wants to type uh, a word, to, uh, a letter. So this is um, not very practical for the user, uh, for the user aspect. So some years from here, people start to work stop to work with this method and they start to work with a quart based keyboard what is more practical so um, the simplest way to work with a quart keyboard is to uh, consider that there is a dwell what is a dwell um, dwell is a predefined time that people have to stay gazing through some letter and select this letter so for instance, if the person wants to type this Portuguese word, that is paralelepipedo, it's a really big word. So the person has to look first to the P. He stay looking at the, at, the, at the P and for this predefined type. And then finally select, the system finally select. Then the person has to look to A, gaze okay, the A is predefined time once you select the A and doing that letter by letter. So then the R and, and goes on. Um, one of these problems, one of the problems with this technique is to find out what is the best dual time for that. Because if the dual time is very big, or it's, it can make a person be tired, imagine that you have to look letter by letter for a long amount of time. So uh, if the person has to type a whole phrase at some point, uh, um, their eyes is going to start to be dry because this is not an easy task. And not just that, if you uh, long time for dwell, um, uh, the system can, be tor can turn very um, time consuming. So the person can stay, can spend too much time for type just one phrase. And this is not what you want. You want to do something that the person can type fast. So, but for the other hand, if you put a small time, what is also a problem, uh, the person can uh, select more letters than the person really wants to. So let's imagine that the person here comes from P to A, and in this moment, she stops for a little in G in this path, and then the system selects the G, and the person has to have the work of delete the letter, and we don't want that. So to find the correct dual time, dual time is really a problem, and. Um, yeah, this is one kind of um, this, this is one kind of uh, basic typing technique. But we want more. Like during the PhD, we were trying to work with uh, a dual-free eye typing technique. What it means? It means that the person can be able to type all letters without doing stop. So we have during this process a lot of problems with the, of these the, of these not. Uh, not the selection of not wanted letters. Um, this problem we call Midas Midas search. That is to select everything that the person passes. Um, so when I start to work with that, I start to study about all the movements that the eyes do. Um, and this is something interesting when we work with human computer interaction. That once we you start to work with this. With some scenario, you will have to know everything that is related to the human behavior on that. So uh, once I start to work with um, gazing, I, I had to know what are the movements that uh, eyes do. So uh, the most important movement is the fixation. Oh, sorry. Is the fixation. That is when you gaze to some point on, on like here in this example, let's say on this screen. So, that's a fixation. And then uh, there is also a saccade. That is when you go from one point to other point. Um, when we are working with uh, typing, not just for gaze or for uh, eye typing or touching, 
we all the typing systems we have this problem we also have this problem of language error that is uh sometimes the user can type wrongly the word that they want to do and we still have to find out what is the correct word um so we also have problem this is a problem that is before um all the movements but we also have problems during the movements for instance during the saccade uh we have problems because uh, we can have problems with the optical system. For instance, um, we know that our eyes doesn't uh, work very precisely. Our eyes can be shaking sometimes, and it can confuse the, um, the eye tracking when the eye tracking is trying to track where you are looking at, with gazing through. Um, we also can have problems in visual memory. Uh, it means Maybe the user is the first time that the user is using a correct keyboard. So the user will have to, the problem of doesn't know where is the letter. So for the person instead comes to here, the person is going to be here and is going to try to look to search the letter. And then it can also confuse the system. Um, there is also the problem of low expertise and layout because uh, maybe the user doesn't know which actions he has to do to start a word or to start to type a word or to finish to start to, to type a word and um, it also can be used for the system and you have to deal with all these problems so let's look here an example of uh, a person that's trying to type this word so the person gets first to B, then gets red and then text E, goes ref because the person has um, doesn't know how to type the word and we also have another problem that is sometimes like it's a regular movement of our uh, it's a regular pattern of our eyes we don't do sometimes we don't go from one point exactly to the point that we want to go so our eyes are not very precise to where is the end point that we want to look especially if we have uh, a small uh, and a small distance between the targets. So it can be very complicated for the eyes to stop exactly in the place that we let, we want the eyes stopping. So sometimes in, when the eyes are doing a uh, saccade, the eyes can mistype, can miss the target and go to a wrong target. And we also have to, do, to deal with that. So this movement we call scanning. And then there is this, the person finished typing, and we have to deal with that to understand that person really wants to type elephants. So, and as I told you before, we also have um, to deal with the movements that the interface requires for the user to do the, the typing. So, and we also have another problem, that is the eye tracker. Um, the hardware that we use influences in the, how many samples we are going to obtain. So we can have very cheap eye trackers, like $99, or you can have very expensive eye trackers, like $10,000. And um, usually these very expensive eye trackers are used in neuroscience studies. But in this case, for us, we wanted to do this during my PhD. Our idea was to create um, a system that anybody, like even people that doesn't have too much money, to the, this, the benefit, some benefits. So in this case, we use a very cheap uh, eye tracker, the eye tracker of $99. And uh, the problem with the cheap eye tracker is that they don't, they take a little longer to do the rotation. So they don't do a sync. Not, when, once they are trying to get a sample and trying to get where the person is looking at, is looking at the path is not coming out of the path, like um, the trick is not going to give to us all the path that the person made with the eyes. The person is going to do, give, give some samples. And in these samples, we can miss some stuff, so we can have more of some other eyes that we don't want. So this is also a really difficult problem in this scenario. So, ah, and we also have a problem that person can blink. And once you blink, when the person come back for into the term, the person can look at a completely different position to where the person was before, and then you also have to give to to give that. So, um, 
I started to work with this after uh, my colleague. There was a colleague of mine that started this work. Um, that was Joe Pedrosa. He created this interface for people that have, for this scenario for people that have some disability. And um, it is in his interface, he had, um, so, so, his system was called Feature Queen. And in his interface, the person was free to do all the movements and it's not the need of the well. So he had uh, his interface a phrase that the person should type. And then the time that the person typed a word, the typed word appeared, the person knew which word the person had typed. It. Um, so every time the selected key, like every time that the person was gazing through some key and the system was detecting that the person was gazing to that, the selected the key was red. And if the person stayed longer the, in the letter, the letter was going to be more red and uh, darker, uh, just for the user have this feedback. Um, you know, so every time that the person the, the person starts to gaze, she type a word. To then after she finished to type all the word, the person had to look to the bottom, and then the person can could finally select the word. So when she gazed to the to the selected word, the selected word stayed like with a dark blue, and the person was able to come back to the keyboard to type the next word. But in this case, in this case of this example would be the A. So for to deal with the problems that I told you before, what he made was a um, system that was based in future. So what he had was a completely messed up entry that was that. And with this entry, he filtered the letters until he finds some candidates and then um, um and then and that's it yeah. and then the person could um see if the correct word that the person was looking for was in the list or no and then the person could retype or select the word uh i'll give you an, a video just for you to see the tool working uh he, this work he published um he published as a, a small work in the very beginning, in the Kai, a CD Kai, and then he made application in Texas, that is a, a, a journal. So for the CD Kai, he, he made this, this video that I will pass to you, so you can see it working. We demonstrate a well free eye typing technique that is based on filtering out letters from the sequence of letters grouped by the user. It ranks possible words based on their length frequency, and it creates a candidate list. The user writes a word by looking at each letter of the word without having to dwell. Then the user looks at the bottom part of the interface, traverses the top ranked suggested word, and accepts the highlighted candidate word by looking to the type text or back to the keyword to type the next word. Yeah, it was a fairly short uh, video. So, okay, so since we um, here we had this work, and um, I was starting my PhD, we were thinking about what we could do. We had an opportunity to increase these ranking of words. So, for instance, in this example here, uh, with his technique, the correct word appeared in the third position. So, our idea is to put all the words, or as many as possible, in a better ranking position. And as I already had uh, knowledge in um, recommendation systems, so we start to use um, recommenders methods for working in the ranking. So, um, so as you can see, like in this first moment, I still were not working exactly with the design of the system, but we are working with a small challenge that were behind the design that also could influence in the uh, interaction of the users when while using the, the system. So uh, when we talk about human computer interaction, it's not just, um, not just the interface, not just what the user see, but also everything that is behind. So we can also combine the computer interaction with different fields of computer science, like um, uh, system, machine learning, and anything else, um, software engineering, and others. So, okay, so what we do for uh, trying to mm, get a better ranking? 
So uh, for this moment, I'm not sure. I try not to stay too much in the mathematical part because um, I want to focus more on the hemoglobin fraction, and we still have other works to talk about. But um, for, in this moment, we started to work to treat this problem as a problem of noise channel. What is a noise channel? Problem is um, let's consider that we have a correct uh, signal, and then this correct signal is passed to a noise source, and then the we have a final sign that is completely messed up. So we have to know what is this noise source and how we can use this messed up uh, sign to the correct one. So that was exactly what was this problem. And then we use the noise channel, um, the noise channel, let's see, the noise channel technique to, um, to, to see, to, to understand which was the correct sign. So, how it works. So since we have um, a very messed up input and we have a candidate of words, we have to, we have to, we have to, um, we have to get what, what of the candidate words can be the most probably of be the correct word. So for doing that, we use it a lot of probabilistic, um, Small, small pieces of probabilistic, probabilistic also. Um, small pieces of probabilistic things. You're gonna see during the presentation. But for the first thing that we used it was a language model. Uh, what was that? Uh, it was a probability of the word being in a dictionary. So we had a dictionary with um, frequencies of words in a corpus, and then we used that. Um, then we used we made a semantic metric where we combined oh, where we combined different um, different probabilistic probabilistic is oh, for instance oh, sorry we combined different small pieces of the problem for instance um, what was the probability sorry I am confused here um, for instance what was the probability here for we have this word. So we had to, what was the probability of this O, for instance, being here or not being? So it can be a, can be deleted from here, or it can, it can also have an uh, addition of other letter here. So we had to use um, a lot of um, sums of different probabilities to um, have a probability of the final, a final probability of each candidate word and to discover with the, what has the, the most, the biggest probability for that. Um, but then we have a problem, like uh, people could ask us, why you don't just use uh, regular, um, regular met methods that people use for regular keyboards? And then um, we have to say that uh, it doesn't work very well in this specific scenario. Um, because usually when we are typing in regular keyboards, we have just a small incidence of noising. Uh, we don't have too much incidence of errors in the word. So it's very, it's a completely different uh, scenario from when you are working with a gesture, for instance, a swiping or a visual scenario. So, uh, so uh, we made, um, here uh, is an example that uh, from the literature. What happens now is traditional spelling correction. And here is what we got when we made um, when we made experiments with gaze interaction. So in gaze interaction, we have a lot of incidents of insertion of letters in the word. So um, so just that is a, a big. Uh, uh, challenge and uh, it's um, it, it changed completely the what we use here. So, so what was our goal during the, the work? First was to understand what were the specific scenario, specific noise, specific noises of the scenario, and how we could get probabilities regarding this specific noise and add to the model. Um, we also want to, like, we didn't want to lose all this information that we already had. So how we could combine 
the methods of the traditional spelling correction with uh, the specificities of the scenario. And not just that, this had to be done in a really small amount of time because when a person is typing a word, the person doesn't want to be waiting too much for to get the word, so it had to be done in real time. And uh, once we increase the once we increase uh, the ranking, how it changes in the in the way that the person is going to use the keyboard. Um, so the first challenge was to find the correct uh, uh, to find the candidates, and for finding the candidates, uh, we worked with a um, Mofranco method. That was a method that we stored in a, in a try. Um, all the dictionary words and their residuals. So what was the residuals was uh, the deletions that we could make in this word. For instance, here for life, let's consider that you are working just with two deletions in K. Um, so we we store not just the word life, but all the possible words that we generate when we do addition or two deletions. So once the, the, the user type of word, we also do deletions in the word that we received as input, and then we try to give to make some match with the dictionary word and to see if it's a possibility. So for instance, here we received the leaf. So we could match with the um, with the residual of the dictionary word. So we can say that life can be um, can be a candidate for this input string. If we receive love, uh, we can generate their um, their residuals, possibility, the deletions, and then uh, we can match also with uh, here with the residual of love. And then we can say that love can be uh, a candidate for love, and uh, and so so goes on. So uh, with that, that we use this method for having the uh, for having the candidate list, and um, for having once we have the candidate list, we need to know what is the probabilities, as I told you. So what we used was our general probabilities of. Um, once we had like a um, completely word, we need to know what were the oh I can say that what were all the operations that we could do in this word to arrive in the correct word. So we used the probabilities for uh, a general corpus that was not specific for the scenario. So for this this method was completely based on the the uh, whole time or we arrived at the correct word. So what was the um, the other probabilities for doing that without considering the scenario. And then that was a combination with uh, considering the scenario that we, are, we were working. So for that, we, um, we create a corpus. Um, we, we made some uh, experiments with the users and then create a corpus and then we saw um, how, how many, uh, when then we, we calculate the probabilities of the person uh, arriving in the, from the, the wrong word to the correct word, specifically in the scenario. And I also combined that with the noisy of the, um, of the eye tracker. So once we know that the person is, when the, when the person is looking to a, a key, the person can be not just looking to the, this key, but can also be looking to the keys that are nearby. So we also put that in the, in the model, we combine them and then uh, we achieved uh, great results. So with these methods, um, all these combinations, um, we published two papers. Um, and then we made a submission to the Google Award. Um, and uh, with this submission, we received an uh, award of Google in 2017, what was really great for us, um, because then we had the funding to go to the conferences, and also I could do the experiments. In, uh, I went to the University of Toronto to do my experiments. Um, we had uh, some problems for, like, first, uh, this, as I told you, this work was a continuation of a work of a colleague of mine, 
and this colleague of mine had worked before with uh, Professor yeah, Professor Kai Tong. Um, and this time he was in Charlotte, University of Charlotte, but then he went to the University of Toronto. And as he was uh, very expert in working with uh, this field, so I went to the University of Toronto to work with him, so he was me. Um, so I went to the GP, and uh, that was the first moment that I had uh, a contact with a very huge laboratory of uh, human computer interaction. So, um, so DGP is now the, the biggest uh, group that works with the HCI in the world. Um, they, when I arrived there, it was, it was crazy because they had uh, two floors just of people that worked with um, human-computer interaction. Uh, there was one floor basically just for people that were working with accessibility and uh, a lot of people were working with um, systems for elderly. And and um, there were also people working a lot with the visualization. And uh, if I mean, it was a good experience because then I, I could stay really in contact with the field uh, during four months. I, um, I attended the, the meetings and I saw what they were working. And then uh, I, um, then it was the moment that I thought, oh, I don't, don't want to work just um, behind the interface, but also working um with um, the design so during the time that i was there we discussed a lot about how we could improve um improve the interface uh, unfortunately we didn't have too much time to work on that this is your work to 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 continue but um, i could make my experiments and then i came back on to home with all my experiments on so uh, I think that when uh, we work with human computer interaction, the most difficult part, I, I think the most critical part of working with, uh, com with humans is the part of the experiment, of the experimental part. Um, first of all, every time that you do an uh, experiment with a human, you have to do a consentment form. Um, sometimes, like here, we had to do a, a also a form a consentment of image because sometimes you have to want to record what you uh, what you are uh, experimenting so what i made in the experiment that i made in uft like before i had done all these experiments but all the experiments were related to improving the improvements of rankings so we created different methods um that, like the ones that i said before and we compared all the methods, but all of them were, we were using uh, techniques of recommended systems. We are not using uh, humans for doing the experimentations. So that was the first time that I made the experiments, like, like really worried about the human part. So in this moment, we compared uh, the model that we had, the ranking that we had with the future thing. So we made the experiment with eight users, and every time that you, do experiments with the humans, you have to report not just the, the numbers, but you have to report about the users, if uh, they were male, if they were male, if the age, um, if they, in this case, for instance, if they use glasses, if they use contact lens, and um, if they decided to use or not to use in the experiment, all of that. So during this experiment, we made six sessions of one hour each participant so each participant had like it was almost one hour it had 20 minutes to talk first with uh, one condition that would be filtered ping or my my method and then it had an interval a break and then another uh, they had to type with another condition so we applied a form of uh, NASA TLX form that is a form for we see how well uh, it's a, a subjective form or the users tell how the person feel uh, during their experience, during the experiment. Um, so we have made two, group, two groups. So the first group started with one technique, the second group started with other technique. All of that had to be randomly. So um, we had, uh, so for those, like all the experiments that I had before, I done before, we had 
we were using a different corpus. So at this time, for being fair, we used the same corpus that Pedroza used in his uh, his experiment. So that was something that could be uh, we could get results that were not what we were expecting because of that. Uh, so that was also a, a challenge for us. And uh, oh, sorry, there is a, no. um, another difference. Like if for doing experiment uh, in uh, in Canada, uh, from doing experiment in, in Brazil, that in Brazil we cannot give you any kind of money compensation to um, to the participants. While in uh, Canada we can. So when um, Pedroza made the, the experiments the first time in his uh, in his paper. So he had this, like he could do uh, uh, a compensation, like a financial compensation to the users and a financial compensation can also change how the user is going to be uh, willing to use, uh, willing to participate of the experiment. So we have to stay all, all the time in the same condition, all the time in the same human condition. And the uh, other thing is that if I made the experiment in Brazil, it was very hard to find people that were like a uh, natural, like it, that the English was the first language. So that was another good thing about doing the experiment in Canada. So here I put the, the final results just for you, you have an idea. But uh, the good part that we had uh, here is what to measure in this case or in this scenario that is words per minute. That is, um, as you can imagine, the amount of words that somebody can type in a minute. So we can see that in the end, people like here's the first session and here's the last session. People with our technique were able to type more um, words uh, faster than uh, the future thing. Now we also can see that people deleted less because they commit less errors when they were using uh, our technique. So just uh, changing uh, the working made a great difference. Um, here uh, I have I have a, a graph for participants just for we see, not just in general, not in general, but by participant, but for the improvements and other participants. Uh, some participants who doesn't have a significant uh, difference when using, but most of the cases they have a significant difference when they were using our technique. And here is what you got in the ranking. So basically, considering that we could put six words in each page, uh, basically until the third page, the person could almost um, could find more than 90 percent. The person could finally can easily find the word that they, they wanted. Mm. So regarding the subject assessment, most of the people didn't find too much differences between the the, the methods. What was very um, understandable because um, it was just something behind the interface, it was not something in the interface. So if there was some big change in the interface, of course they could notice. But they realized, some participants realized that they could find more easily the correct word. Um, sometimes future thing brings a lot of words that was not what, what, what we were expecting, for instance. Uh, a word that was like e e e e e e e that is not exactly a word, just something that is in, in the in the dictionary, and um, and some people, some users realized that, that even when they didn't didn't get through all the letters, they could find the correct the correct word. What is good? Uh, what we also did with this experiment was um, a study of uh, the time that people spent to. Uh, delete the word, to select a word, and to write the word. And um, I think the, the most imp impressive result was for the selection because uh, people really spent less time for selecting uh, the word when they were using a technique because usually a word was like better hanging and they started to the people used to look for the word in the first position. And um, so just for um, just for giving some numbers or concise. Um, so, in average, people achieved uh, 17.5 17 almost in words per minute, what was good. Uh, it was a uh, better result than what we had in literature. Uh, in the last season, in the last session, people could almost have achieved 20 words per minute. Um, some, we realized that some users were taking more risks 
when they were typing from the first session to the uh, last session. And when they took more risk, they could, like our technique were so much better than the last one. And um, basically our technique were, were able to do, to deal better with uh, noisy scenarios, like this intake, when the person is entering contact with the first line or the person is taking more releases and all of that. So, oh, this is some follow-up of this, this work that we had. We, um, we were thinking about how to improve the evaluation because uh, usually in, when you do this kind of studies, we have to say to the user, what is the phrase? Otherwise, the user will be thinking about the phrase, we're thinking about the word that they have to do, and this is not the behavior that we expect because each user can, uh, can behave differently. And uh, what we really want is to have a pattern that all the, uh, all, the, um, you, all the participants of the experiment can follow. So we also want to do experiments with motor, people with motor disabilities, of course, but this is so much complicated to do. Um, we also, uh, we, we realized during the experiment that people were using the feedback in different ways. So we wanted to change to make some changes in the interface to see if we could uh, benefit more uh, the technique if we did this change. So we also want to, like you, some other things that we thought it would let you use another kind of models and try to get better predictions. And uh, if other, other thing it was to use that, not just for English, but how we could do this for Portuguese. And then, um, Ooh, and, um, yeah, that's it. So these are the the, um, the publications that we published during the during this um, during this work. And um, as I told you, one of our interests were to do this uh, work, but for Portuguese. So uh, during my PhD, I also uh, worked with um, an undergrad student that was Jeremy Holmes. Uh, for a uh, Portuguese keyboard. Um, this keyboard was based on uh, on gesture, it was a gesture keyboard, and a difference, uh, another difference from this keyboard to our keyboard. It was that this keyboard could, um, uh, could uh, give recommendations without that the person needs to type the whole word. So, for instance, we need we want the word extremamente. So just the, the, the user typing E X T, we could find the word in the suggestion list. So uh, so we worked with uh, nine regions. Uh, we always show the user what is the word that it has to type. So here we display the word. Um, in this part display the typed word, and then it's just some words appeared uh, uh, right on the border. So uh, I put here some results, but just for you see the difference between this work and the other work. Um, so we worked with um, five participants in this experiment, and uh, we made three sessions. So we made one chart, uh, one block of test, and uh, in each session we had. Um, yeah, for each session, I had one block of test for the person to calibrate the equipment and uh, he familiarize it. And then we had four blocks of five minutes of typing. Um, we evaluated for the same measures that we um, evaluated the other, the, other, um, um, the other system. And uh, um, so I, I just want to show you what happened here. Um, so, uh, X is a, a gesture-based keyboard, uh, so the amount of words that the person, like the speed that the person achieves is not so high, and this is uh, weight, this is something that we really wait, we know, we know that that's what happened. Uh, so for this kind of keyboard, this keyboard was, for a gesture keyboard, this, work, this keyboard was working really well, basically because of the recommendations, and also it was the first keyboard for uh, Portuguese, um, but we didn't have um, 
high in speeds like we had with the one the, the one that I showed before. Uh, that is how we had uh, like almost 20 words per minute, and now we had almost eight. But still, it was good for the kind of the keyboard that we were working. So, some, uh, some just for talking about the evaluation of the interface. Um, some, uh, some, uh, some participants are related that they have some feel some tired sometimes. Um, they have we had some problems for as everything was in black. And the space bar was also black, and the person couldn't find sometimes if they had pressed a space or don't. Um, they were some problems to identify in the beginning, like in the first contact with the interface, what were the correct gestures that they had to do to type some word. Uh, but then they were satisfied with the performance, and um, and they also talk about the font size. So. Okay, so these are the words that I've been working in my PhD. That uh, after that, I went to Mimi. I started to work with uh, Hitoshi Morimoto. That was in my in the committee of my uh, PhD defense, and uh, it was really good because he was really a specialist with um, case interaction. And then I was really discussing about interfaces, and I started to work with uh, human computer interaction. Um, at this time, he was uh, president of uh, the Kogei Association. The Kogei is a communication by gaze interaction association. So there is a whole community that just work with the gaze interaction, and they do all the kinds of works. It's not just uh, typing, but they also work with uh, games, for instance, um, um, or a gender of selection, and all the, all, the kind, all the kinds of interaction that you can imagine with the gaze. So I also found out the, the conference because uh, then I stayed really inside of the gazing, um, the gaze interaction community. So there is a conference just for gaze interaction uh, according to the Brazil uh, measure. It's a uh, A2 qualities. Uh, this is a symposium on eye tracking station applications. And if you are interested in see people working with gaze interaction, I really recommend you to, uh, to give a look on this conference. So, um, why is I've been working with um, keyboards before? Uh, we continued. Uh, he, he called me for staying with his group for six months to work on other keyboards. And one of the ideas, one of the keyboards that he had proposed, uh, it was the Algo key. Uh, I will show you the a video, a small video, like the jokes that I showed before, uh, just for so you have an idea how Algo key works. But Algo key is uh, differently for the work, the keyboard that I presented to you. This is uh, not a dual free keyboard. Uh, people had to do a small dwells to select the letters. But it has the advantage that the person, that it, it can give to the person um, the recommendations right at the moment the person is typing. So it's like the Brazilian keyboard that I showed you. Uh, the person doesn't need to type the whole word. The person just need to type uh, the beginning, and then if the suggestion is there, the person can stop typing and go straight to the suggestion. So that's the keyboard. So there's no fun. But here's the phrase the person is typing. Oh, the person has typed. Here's the phrase the person is typing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a pause here just for you see. Okay. Something that what is very interested interesting about this keyboard. Oh, can I stop it? What is very interesting about this keyboard is that we use it not just um we don't use just um uh, the um we don't, don't use just the, the, the focus of, the, of our gaze. We also use information that are in our peripheral vision. So we use uh, like, um, I forgot the word. Mm -hmm. It's a funky. Yeah, uh, we don't use just the fixation in this case. Like you, here, for instance, we are doing a, a focus on R, but we also can see the letters that it was started before and the recommendations that can 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 come. 
So with this keyboard, it's like um, a outro read is a dual time keyboard. It was a keyboard that was very efficient and uh, had really great uh, results. I think uh, it was like something like 16 words per minute in average, but it's very good for our dual keyboard. And uh, when I was there, uh, I could work on this keyboard. We were trying to to do different keyboards, a keyboard that was not um, dual, dual based, but was also could be like dual free. So I started to work um, with uh, another student, uh, PhD, his PhD student, uh, on her PhD work. And um, we were proposing different uh, solutions for that problem. Um, unfortunately, they stayed just a few times, so I couldn't see um, how, how far it, 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 her work went. Um, but uh, it, it was a, a really, a good, um, it was a, a really interesting problem to think about. Uh, other thing that we were doing while I was there, we were discussing a lot, was how to use, um, how to use the gaze interaction for an environment, for, for, for interacting with different objects in an environment. So, um, so we use a, a HoloLens for, for simulate that you were in an environment full of uh, iOS objects, and um, one of these, like we had to start for the basic. So one of these objects it was uh, lamp, and how we could just with the gaze interaction, um, like he turn on and turn off, turn on and turn off the lamp. Or other example is uh, if we had um, an air conditioner, how we can turn on, turn off, uh, increase or decrease uh, the degrees of the, the air conditioner and how we could make, uh, like which acts we should use or make it uh, unnatural or intuitive uh, for the user, uh, which actions should, should be, should be, um, should be used, should, should be created for, um, for making this, this interaction transparent to the user. Uh, this is another, um, Another project that we were working on while I was there, and uh, the, but this is um, still in the gaze scenario, but completely different from uh, typing. That is what I was working for, and this is was a really interesting uh, problem as well. Um, I say there. Oh. Okay. So I stayed there for um, six months, which was. A very short period. Um, it's on here, I put an example. But um, after that, uh, I came to to France, so I started to work in block team. That is also uh, a team just um, just work with uh, human computer interaction, and they do different kinds of works. They can uh, they work with three uh, D um, environments like. Um, uh, it was similar to the, what was in before with uh, holdings, but it's that it's that it's it's uh, being. But they, here they worked with uh, virtual reality, so they were working with how to select um, objects in the virtual reality, and it was an interesting work. That was work of uh, my colleague Mark, and they had uh, different kinds of work. Okay. Um, this guy was working with music, uh, trying to, once you have a keyboard, how to discover the notes um, that, um, the notes that come from the keyboard, like musical notes. Uh, let's see other examples. Um, oh, there's only, but anyway. Uh, so it was, um, I, when I came here, I was really interested in you know what they were working because they were very huge. Um, they do a lot of publications just in this year, they made 11 publications. Uh, and this is one of the years that they didn't publish too much because all of the things that had happened in the, in the world. So when I came here, I came to work with a uh, mouse. So, um, uh, so uh, let's see, um, so, you know, probably all of you know, that uh, in every operational system, we can set the speed of the mouse. But there is a thing on that. Um, other systems are considering that 
all of elder people are going just to use one kind of mouse. But there is a lot of types of mouse in the world, and uh, the configuration of the mouse can influence of the speed. So besides we have uh, this, like, uh, this pattern, this standard of speed, even in Windows or Mac, uh, the DPI, the amount of data per inch that the, the mouse has, can, influence, can also influence in um, the speed. It's not just this configuration. So, and not just that, like uh, the amount of, uh, the, sorry, the amount of counts per inch that the, the mouse has can influence, the amount of dots per inch that a screen has can influence on the speed. So, what we were doing, we were working in this game functions. Uh, the game function is a function that maps what the user is doing in a real world to what the mouse is doing in a virtual world. So, we were working this game functions and uh, we were trying to show to the people with our experiments the, the importance of not just report when they do um, when they do experiments analysis, not just report the the pointer speed they use, but also the hardware configuration. And uh, we tested different hardware configurations for that. And uh, uh, we also made changes in the game functions to show uh, the importance of for people to care about. Um, reporting all the information when they are doing it. So here I have some examples of uh, uh, researchers, like in some papers that people doesn't put all the information regarding the, the the mouse they were using or the hardware configuration they were using. And this is really a problem because uh, it's uh, there's no when we are working with mouse, there is no pattern or we compare. So different people compare different things and. Um, Especially with the speed, this is a really big problem when we are working with that. So uh, we made some experiments with people uh, using different uh, hardwares before we prove our point, and then we realize that there is really a difference. But like when we talk, talk about error rate, there is almost no difference between error rate and me. It would be um, when the person has to achieve some target and uh, if the person achieves or if the person misses the target. And there is almost no difference between the hardware, but we found differences in the movement time, what was what we expected. And, um, and then um, we made another study that we simulate, um, that we simulate for different hardware, how would be the correct speed in the, in the Operational system, conf uh, operational system uh, configuration, speed configuration, and then we had the result that we were that we wanted. That was uh, all of them had to be the same. Was because we also that we were trying to simulate a different. Um, almost we're changing the game function and, and uh, obtaining. We are trying to obtain the same, uh, the same movement time for the users. So, one of the like our idea in doing this work was not just um, it's regarding the, the academia, uh, the academia researches, but also for people. Uh, for instance, there are some people that use a, com a different computer when they are at work and when they are at home. They use different hardware configurations, different mouse, and then they can feel differently a different experience when they are working at home and when they are at house, at their homes, when they are working at their works and when they are working at home. So with that, we wanted to give to the user what were the correct configuration of the speed that they should use in different um, in different environments when they are using different hardware. And this work is uh, also in submission, so we submitted to Kai uh, one week ago. And then I, I will finally talk about Kai. Uh, Kai is the main conference of uh, human computer interaction. Uh, last year, India gave us, like to the whole group, uh, the possibility to go there. And what was really awesome, uh, I didn't have an idea of how, how big it was. So last year, the conference was in Glasgow. It was me and some colleagues arriving in Glasgow. That was me talking in the conference. Uh, so just for you to have an idea how big is the CHI. Uh, CHI conference is the second biggest conference from ACM. So it is, I don't remember exactly now who is the first one. But I just know that this first one passed the CHI very recently. Um, it was four days of conferences, and uh, it was 
uh, during the four days, we had 22 parallel tracks. So sometimes it was very difficult to find which track we would like to watch because it was, uh, all of them were very interesting. So, so it's more than 700 papers, more almost 3,000 distributions. And um, if you are interested in work with the homocopy direction, I really recommend you to give a look in the papers. And also they have a lot of videos on YouTube. You can look for Kai 2019, 2020. These aren't always more videos like the ones that I showed to you. And um, then you can know more about all the works of HCI and um, um, also have some ideas. Uh, I will just show you one more video. And that's, this video is um, one of the, uh, the guys that idealized this, this. This is a jacket, a jacket that was a partnership between Levi's and Google. And one of the person that um, thought about this jacket, that worked on this jacket, uh, made a talk on the conference. And um, I was reading up. And there is a lot of things that I would like to show you, or the works of Kai, but the, <laughs> I guess that I use it too much of the time. Uh, we just show this jacket very quickly for you know uh, that uh, work with human computer interaction, there is no limits. Uh, I showed to you some works that I've done with gaze interaction and uh, the mouse, I will just show very quickly what I mean with mouse. But basically, it's everything that you can interact. So if you can interact with, uh, like if interaction with a robot is also an interaction, um, ways of interact uh, in the touches. Um, like there is a lot of ways that people are thinking about interaction in touch, so this is um, also very cool. So I show this jacket to you now. So this is interactive. Uh, Getting next direction. We turn left onto 15th Avenue. Text from Emily. I'm running late. See you at the shop. You are five minutes away and will reach your destination by 7.05 a.m. Okay, so that, that was one of the talks. Like, one of the talks that was like how they produce it and how they thought about and how they realized the process to, to finally achieve the jacket. Uh, it was really interesting. And um, it was interactive jacket that you can you can also configure what uh, what directions you want to do with the jacket. So if you want to see your email, if you want to um, know the route to arrive in the work, and all these things, this is very interesting. Um, so some main conferences of the field is the main conference is Kai. And the second main conference is WIST. There is also a Brazilian conference just. Uh, that is just for human computer interaction, that is EHC. Um, there is uh, the main journal of the conference is the Tokai, that is uh, also the same uh, uh, people that do Kai, but this is the journal. There is a journal just related to accessibility, that is T-Access. And there is also uh, the International Journal of Human Computer Studies, that is also a very good journal for, for EHCI. Um, I recommend to you uh, also there is a series if you are interested in knowing more about uh, usability and the design. And I think there is a series just uh, in, in Netflix that is just uh, about uh, uh, design. And there is one episode in specifically that is uh, they talk about the design of digital products. And they talk about, I think they talk about a lot of digital products, but specifically they talk about Instagram and why Instagram is such a success especially because of the design they decided to adopt for people interacting in the, in the application. Well, thank you. And uh, sorry, I guess I'm talking too much. And if you have any questions, I'm here to, uh, to answer. 
Okay, Hazel, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I think we all learned a little bit more about the career of this type of research and also uh, some of the ongoing works or the works that you can do. Uh, I think that we have a couple of questions and uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to ask the first one. I'm, I'm trying to do it a in a sequence. So what, what was your inspirations to research on techniques of eye typing? Sorry, what do you mean? Yes, yeah, so what, what was the inspiration for you to start researching the techniques of eye typing? Ah, okay. That? So, actually, it was a following up. Um, I was actually working with the recommender system. Uh, I saw, um, I, we had actually, we had this work of Pedroza. And uh, the first idea actually was to put this keyboard that he had for Portuguese. And the Portuguese had some particularities regarding English because in Portuguese we have uh, accent and special characters. So we start to think about that. And then when we were working with this, uh, we thought, why don't we use recommender systems and other of these things in um, all the methods, more like probabilistic methods in this case, in this keyboard and try to enhance the, the, the ranking. But it was something natural that happened. But I think for me, uh, when I was in the PhD, I was really happy because this project, I felt that I could be helping somebody and uh, uh, accessibility is something that I think uh, I feel really interested to work on. Um, more for this aspect that you feel that you can uh, help the society some way. Nice, nice. Nice. There's another question, which is, uh, do you know any about augmented reality technologies applied to uh, your research context? Uh, and so at this moment, the only contact that I really had with augmented reality, it was the uh, IoT project that I, I showed to you in, um, in um, when I was in Germany. Um, but but this, this is... Uh, this is a field that is quite a new field. So there is not too much works on interaction for this field yet, uh, especially because uh, people don't have too much access to the equipment. So this is something that make people um, like uh, go a little bit low on this side. Um, but there is a lot of opportunities for creating uh, new kinds of interactions for for uh, not not just for our augmented reality, but also for um, uh, for virtual reality as well. Um, I don't know. What else? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's another question. The screen. You know, do you think that the learning system can help solve the problem that help people with disabilities when you know, they use? Yes, we think so. Um, when we when we are working, like when we finish the because we used something that was uh, a very simple, it was like a this model. It was just a combination of different kinds of probabilities. Uh, so we mix them in uh, we mix them in um, in the equation. Um, but then uh, after that, we were thinking about using other um, more sophisticated methods. But the only problem in using more sophisticated methods is that they are very time consuming and we don't have, we, we cannot use too much time for finding the correct word. We have to do this right straight, but the user don't be waiting too much. And it, not just that, we also have um, problems with the machine. Sometimes the person cannot have a good machine to process it. So we have to think wisely about using something more like a more sophisticated method in this case. Yes, yeah, so I changed the question. So uh, I just working with uh, English, and the only moment that I worked in Portuguese was when I was working with Bilen. Um But we also had a problem of uh, the, uh, the special characters that I told you. So what we used to do it was suggest all the, for instance, uh, if there is a. And E on the suggestion, we suggest the both of them and just let the frequency of the word 
and tell what is the what it should be in which position. But it's just that we're just that you languages I've been working. Yeah, it's, yeah, this is something important. I didn't talk about it, but this is really something really important. Uh, the environment, it's very important that the, the environment that you use can really affect the experiment. So it's very important when you are comparing two techniques that you use the same environment, the same distance, and the same lights. So sometimes even if you are doing the experiment in the morning and then the other experiment at night, uh, it can influence, and not just that, because the, the user can also be more tired at night than in the morning. So all of that had to be well designed in the in the experiment. So in this case, that we are working with gaze and we're using our eye tracker, so the lights can really affect. And that the way to fix it is just always use the same uh, configuration all the time. Yeah, I think I remember one time that I, I did one of your experiments at uh, USB. And uh, yeah, one thing that I ask you and uh, might be applying here as well, it is the, um, uh, the psychological effect when you're doing the experiment. Because uh, uh, yeah, so if you're doing this uh, eye tracking and the eye typing uh, experiment, you might be, get stressed because you have to move your eyes all the time and you have to show uh, the device that you're where you're going or what kind of uh, uh, word you're typing, and there's this uh, psychological effect that might affect also the the result of the study as well. I'm not sure yeah. if you if you think about it or. No, this is really really true. Um, that's why I said that for me the mo the biggest challenge when we're working with computer interaction is to do the design of the experiment, because every small thing can uh, influence the result. So, I, like my my experiment, I made using two blocks of twenty minutes. What I think it was now that I have more know-how to think to say, I think it was not a good strategy. But when we are working, when I was working with Guilherme, for instance, he used four blocks of five minutes. So the person had more breaks to stop. And this is like to, to put the breaks for the participant while they are using, while they are doing the, the experiment. This is something really important. Yeah, for sure. There's another question. I think that we should do this as the last one. Oh, no, 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 that is really, no, I like it too. Uh, I, just, uh, I just wrote, uh, include his name there because Alexandre Hansen was a student uh, here at UTFPR a few years or many years ago. In fact, I think I, I was part of, his, of uh, the committee of his master's thesis about, it would have been surely more than 10 years ago. And he was working on an emulator. At that stage, it was not eye tracking because the technology was not there for that, but they were already doing it with, I think, uh, people uh, moving uh, their, uh, their their head or something. But, but the interesting thing about it is that it was predictive. Uh, it, it, it decided, depending on the language that uh, people were using, it knew the probability of the next le uh, letter after each letter based on the language. And, and, and that, uh, instead of having a keyboard in front of, uh, of his face, uh, the, the person would have uh, well, it would still be the, the, the let's say the different keys, but the keys, keys would change places depending on their probability in the language that was being used. For example, if it was, if it was Portuguese, uh, uh, vials, uh, uh, depending on the, the probability of, uh, of appearing after another letter, would be very evident and would be in a, pos in a position that he would, that the person would have to change the position of their face very, uh, not very much, and not going from one side to the other, just up and down uh, to choose the next letter. Uh, it was really interesting. I know that he went uh, on studying that in his uh, PhD. Don't have much, uh, many details on that, but I think it's something that you could check and see if you can adapt uh, the work that you're uh, doing. Maybe we're talking, there is a, a keyboard that it's called Dasher. This keyboard is the keyboard. most, it can be this keyboard because this keyboard they are using, like a lot of people have been working this keyboard doing uh, improvements. And uh, I think there is there is a version like that for gesture, and then they change it also for using in the mouse, and then they change also for doing case. There is a lot of people that, uh, if like what you are describing is really similar to gesture, so probably it can be. I don't, I don't. Again, I don't even know if if uh, he was original in the idea or if it was just an implementation. It's been many years ago, but I know mm -hmm. that their work is around. And uh, I mean, if you Google it, uh, you'll probably find something in Portuguese and everything. Uh, I mean, it, it was at a stage that his even his supervisor. Was already close to retiring, uh, Professor Aurelio Charon. He was also doing research in France, but he was already retiring. So maybe, have a look. Maybe maybe it gives you directions. Maybe you're going to say, no, this is something that I already know and then we're working on. Yes. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good to know. Okay. I think that we can. I, I, th I think this last question is also important because uh, 
uh, if you have tried to use in Portuguese on uh, on the study that you did before. No, no, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, or that's why language, actually. we chose to work in English because we do have this problem with a uh, limited uh, limited data. And as we are using uh, probabilities of errors, we didn't have this. Like we have frequency of dictionary because we have Portuguese, but we didn't have the amount of errors that people do in Portuguese. So that's why we decided to work in English. And that's why I went to Toronto to do the experiment with English speakers. And uh, that's it. But for Portuguese, you no, know, we really had this problem of uh, lack of data. Yeah, I think uh, we also have this for different stuff like uh, sentiment analysis with Twitter. We have been trying to you know, apply this tech machine learning techniques, but we don't have a lot of uh, trained data for that. In yeah. Portuguese, we have a lot of data set, like uh, 3 million, 4 million, 10 million tweets. Uh, to train the, the machine learning technique, but for Portuguese, like none. We don't have yeah. anyone. We have people to produce. Are interested in work of that, uh, I would recommend to look for the NLE group in the ECMC because they work with a lot. Of, there's a lot of people working with Portuguese language. So yeah. I think in Brazil, the people that work more with uh, uh, with the NLEP for Portuguese is this group in ECMC, in USP. So yeah, yeah, something. yeah. I remember, and I remember that we also discussed it about a partnership with them, but this partnership we couldn't like express too much things that we always have a lot of ideas, but we cannot do everything that we think. You know that. Yeah, for sure. You have to stop at a certain time when you're doing your PhD, otherwise you're gonna you're gonna spend <laughs> yeah, a lot more time doing different stuff. <laughs> okay, I think thank you very much, Heiser, for your presentation. It was a very nice one. Uh, and uh okay. yeah, we really <laughs> was made like quickly there were a lot of things that i was not to remember anymore because it was like a long time ago so yeah. sorry <laughs> uh yeah you want to thank you for your patience and your attention no, that's fine so i think uh, all of us enjoyed a lot the talk and i'm going for the last uh, details i think i'm not sure uh yeah i'm going through the last details so we switched a little bit the the, the slides so uh, i think alicia do you want to mention this uh this idea of the uh, the model for students, no, not beyond this. Yeah, yeah. One, one thing that uh, Flavio and I were discussing during the week is that, of course, all the students go to Moodle very often because we at Moodle have uh, papers and uh, videos and things that prepare the students for the, the talk that is going to happen. But other people that just come for the talk don't make many times don't even know that we have uh, this Moodle interface. So if you wish, just go to to do uh, uh, slash. Uh, uh, resis, just be careful because it's an E, it's, 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 a, it's a, a small E here, uh, and uh, and then you, you you gain access to the to, to, to the Moodle where you always find not just what the next speeches are going to be about, but also texts or, or papers that could uh, help you prepare for 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 the presentations that you will see. Uh, there is one thing I think that there is an access code. The access code after you register there is, I believe. It's very difficult to make sure that nobody who's, who shouldn't be there is there. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? And then there's also the WhatsApp group. Uh, uh, that Well, this link is horrible here. Maybe you could copy, uh, Flavio, the link to the chat because if someone wants to be in our WhatsApp group, that's where we send last minute messages about uh, our, our every Wednesday uh, meeting we, we have. We don't spam anyone there. It's, it's a group, it's a quiet group, but we, we exchange some ideas there, maybe. Uh, Flavio could also cut and paste that uh, and include in the, the chat uh, for us. Um, and uh, what else do we have to say here, Flavio? Yeah, well, maybe yeah. we have to present next uh, next week's uh, uh, speaker, right? No, now it's your uh, duty uh, again because uh, now it's a photo time. So oh, I think last time, time I tried to okay. do it and I did it wrong. So you can do it now. Uh, <laughs> what does that mean, everyone? But, but don't go away because I will still talk about uh, our speaker for, for next week. Who's again very special as usual? We, oh, there's there there's more people showing there. If, if someone can print screen it again, God, yeah, we're going for for the last uh, slide in which I'm going to present uh, Professor Stacy Peter. Yeah. Right? Professor Stacy Peter uh, from uh, Baylor University. I think that she's she's still a young professor, but she's already a full professor from my understanding. She's gone from associate to to. to but this, she, uh, she has the title of professor now there at Baylor University. She's very influential, influential, influential in AIS, one of our leaders, for the, at least for the Americas in information systems. And, and she has this very interesting paper in which she deals with formative constructs. Uh, for those of you who are more into quantitative analysis and use uh, PLS, 
uh, and, and, and uh, structural equations and things like that. She is, she is the person, well, she says that she's not the person any longer because she, this is a paper that she's written a few years back. She wanted to talk about some, uh, some of her recent research, but I told her, you know, this is your most cited paper. It's a paper that has been cited thousands of times. So uh, she, she's definitely the person to talk to us about that. And then the, the, the week after that, we will have Ned Koch with us. Ned Koch, in spite of the name, uh, this uh, uh, Americanized name is Nereu Florencio Koch. Uh, he's a Brazilian. And he's actually uh, a professor who has developed um, software for PLS analysis. Uh, and it's also going to be very interesting. So don't miss the next uh, two weeks. Uh, they're going to be very good for those into quantitative methods. We're going to talk a little more, a little more about methods uh, now. Well, first about theory with uh, Stacy, and then method with uh, Ned Carr. Okay. Well, I guess that's it from me, uh, Flavio. I don't know if you have any slides after that one, if you're going to surprise us with anything. Or no, probably, no. So, no, that's it. That's it. Okay, so see you all guys next week. Aiza, thank you very much. Really enlightening thank presentation. You. We really enjoy it. Thank you. Aiza, thank you very much. And uh, everybody, see you next week. Enjoy the weekend and uh, be safe.